Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in. In this video, I wanted to go over what I'm running in my home lab currently and how I kind of have everything set up. All right, so once I figured out my network and what I have mapped out here, I can implement security um, in places that I'm lacking. I need, I need visibility, I need protection, a simple fire, Verizon firewall that's built into my home router, I felt like it wasn't enough. Um, and this is what I come up with. All right, from my current home network and how it's looking right here, I wanted to show you, this is the in internet goes into the Verizon fire, uh, files router. I have that connected to a switch and to another access point in the other part of the house and i plugged in my vmware server from here which is running pfsense and on the other um network because this via this uh, server has two uh networks um i have the, the cisco plugged into that network so this lan is bridged um and basically adds, uh, connects this to this firewall uh, using the two interfaces on the VMware server. Yep, and so I have my desktop also here that, that's connected uh, to the server, and that's how I see and manage everything. So I felt like I needed an upgrade for how this is set up, um, and this is what I've come up with. Uh, this is my more secured network. I asked at a hardware firewall and i have that handling dhcp it's on vlan one at the moment regular vlan which where it connects to a cisco managed switch from that switch i have options to either set up vlans or i can um I can just have it connected on one network, which is what I have at the moment. Uh, but it gives me options to do more. Uh, plus the firewall, the hardware firewall is a big plus. This is what I'm using at the moment. Firewall, purple, uh, cybersecurity firewall, and uh, Wi-Fi protection. So it's it's pretty good. It's a little pricey uh, for 339, but it gets the job done. And the data that it shows you is uh, pretty uh, pretty good. And I say it's worth it. It's one and done by solution. There's no subscription, and it's part of the best part, uh, probably the best part about it. Um, when the visibility that it gives you into your network, where you can secure your house, um, and this is not a paid advertisement, um, but this is uh, what I've been, uh, what I saw was a pretty simple option. Um, that didn't require too much configuration. Um, so. I had to change up my network to implement something like this. And first of all, took that Verizon router that I had um, and turned it into just an access point. That way I gave it a, a separate static IP address, 12, let's say, disabled DHCP and just kept the SSID broadcasting uh, for for that and then I think I also disabled DNS if it even had one uh, anyways um, because then I have it picking up DNS from firewalla so firewalla was uh, gonna be in charge is gonna be in charge of DACP and DNS and everything uh, I have everything connected to this land still I still have these access uh, this access point broadcasting this network but I have visibility and I have an option to keep it all in one LAN or split it up into more LANs. Um, this also runs on top of um, this network because it also picks up a, a 19, uh, 192 address to even get uh, get to this point. Um, the 172 IP addresses is what gets the, uh, the cameras. This is the actual management network right here. Uh, and then from there, I connect to the switch and the VMware server is on 115. The management interface, the PFSense is on 200. 
and to connect to that is I can have, I have two options. I set up two op uh, OpenVPN interfaces, and one of them accepts LDAP for authentication for for one of my domain domain controllers. And the other one is just a regular VPN tunnel. I can show you a little bit about that and how I kind of have to set, have that set up. Uh, so yeah. All right. So. This is my server at the moment. It's VM, I'm running VMware ESXi version 8, update 1, uh, on a via on a HP Z80 workstation. These bad boys right here. Uh, yep. And I have 16 CPUs. Massive, massive amount of space for for reverse machines, and I love it. Uh, at the moment, I upgraded it with 5.8 terabytes, which uh, I split up in RAID 5 for fi most of it, and the other two is just a data store and a SSD. I can add more, and I'm planning to. But at the moment, this is what I'm running. It's pretty good. Um, from there, uh, instead of just going through each of these virtual machines, I can just show you the networking of how I got it set up. So I mentioned before the server has two network adapters. One of them is designated as the internal and that was the Cisco switch that I wanted to connect it to. I just named it this and then this is a virtual switch uh, from the external port. Um, I can basically show this a little better with this diagram here and the firewall on the bottom left here is in charge of all the VLANs and it goes out to the 192.161.200 address, and that's how I connect to it from my VPN. Clients, servers, domain controllers, uh, the Debian Linux server that's running Splunk, and the, what's in charge of DHCP was is my domain controller, and the DNS server is another backup, but ultimately. That's kind of how I got everything set up. This it didn't happen all at once. It was a bit of a process, one at a time, to get it uh, set up that way. Um, it's, it all started off with just getting the server set up with VMware, and then it just happened one after another. Um, set up the storage, set up a couple uh, machines, then set up PFSense, and learned about the uh, networking for that. And the most important part about this, if you wanted to also do the same, is the network adapters that you have to use here um, Very I need to be specific. So if we go to port groups here, we'll see all the, the different VLANs uh, that I kind of set up here. You'll see on the right the VLAN IDs and the PFSense is basically connected to both of, uh, to two of the two of these. The ISP and the all trunk that's just what it sounds like isp is going to get it, the ps sense connected to the wan in this case there's ps sense here and all trunk is a vlan has a vlan id of 4095 that's important and basically this is what's going to connect the physical Cisco switch to the PFSense on a trunk port. You still need to connect uh, kind of configure the switch on the Cisco side for the uh, trunk interfaces themselves for what VLANs, but uh, this is how you do it on the VMware side. 